Hello, 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 and welcome to the stream. This is Floating Polly, where we're going to be doing some interesting fan art. Uh, my name is Dr. Heatsink, and today we're going to be working on the rig for this character, Sakuya Uzioi. So, we're going to be slightly more in depth this time. So, well, depth even this time. So we're going to be covering uh, a number of topics, but most of this is going to be relating to control setup. And what I have here is how far we got since uh, last time. And so as you can see, we've got half of the skeleton ready and we'll be covering mirroring over the skeleton and also uh, how basically to start setting up controls. So uh, that includes uh, limitation, constraint, and all of that kind of thing. Um, we've got a slightly more upbeat soundtrack this time. Uh, if you could just let me know if it's too loud actually, or too quiet. Uh, I'm just gonna do a little adjusting there just so that I can hear myself. And of course, you know, just enter in the chat uh, if it's, you know, too loud, too quiet, etc., etc. Hopefully this will keep me more awake. Now, all right, so, that's said and done. I'm just gonna do a little repositioning here. Right. There we go. All right then, so. Let us begin. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna freeze all the transforms of the bones that we have. And to do this, I'm just gonna select everything. Modify freeze transformations, but I just want to zoom out just so that I can see every bone before I do this Because sometimes if you freeze the transformations it might there is a chance that uh, When they fix themselves the child bone underneath it will be moved Right, so one of these had an incoming connection. This can happen when you accidentally hit shift or something um, Like some like not shift s and that will Create a keyframe, so it's just a case of finding a keyframe and deleting it. Not a problem. Right, so free, free transformations and just check that uh, all of the bones haven't, you know, done anything weird. Uh, just hit Control Z and Control Y O again, right? As you can see, their orientation changes, but their position does not, and that's the most important thing because we're going to reorient them after. Right, so we're good. Okay. So the next direction is to go ahead and orient them. So if you know anything about uh, skeletons and game engines, they have, of course, three axes. So over here, an example of a bone with three axes visible. So you've got the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z axis, right? Now, this obviously means you need to decide which one of these decides where the bone is pointing. By default, in most engines, I think it's uh, usually the X axis, but it could be different. So it's a case of orienting your bones to, so that they make sense. Um, the reason for this is when you go to limit all of your bone rotations, you want it to be sensible. So if this is pointing over across that way when I go to rotate it and I want to rotate on the x-axis to do something you know where I want if I if for instance I want to rotate the, the palm so that it will um, come in and out like that right uh, in this instance the z-axis may need to be oriented more like that like as if it was on that sort of plane where my mouse is going so pretty simple but it means that they need to be oriented and really the direction that the bone should be facing is towards the next bone in the lane in line but we've frozen all of our transformations so we just need to make sure that they're oriented in the right direction so let's make a start on that just select every bone now i've got this set of scripts called comet scripts and over in joints hierarchy uh, Comet Joint Orient is the one uh, that I usually use. And I want to say what the aim axis is and what the op axis is. So the aim axis would be which direction uh, the axis that points to the next bone is. 
And then the up axis is what I'm saying is the, well, what direction to that bone is the up direction, right? Which might be the x axis, y axis, or z axis, right? In Maya, we typically go y. Um, you know, as in, why would you do that? But um, much like how uh, every program has its quirks, like in this case, Maya has decided that it wants the Y axis to be up, much to the chagrin of many Blender and Max users here. Anyways, but it doesn't really matter. So I've just hit Orient Joints and, oh, no, have I? Sorry. And again. Ah, more than one object matches the name. Ah, right, okay, so what we've done is uh, that the, uh, the script is pointing out that we have made a mistake and that uh, a name has been duplicated. So I'm just going to copy the name, Control C, paste the name in the outliner, and just determine where exactly have I messed up, like an idiot. So, over here. Right, so it's simple enough to find that. Right, so we can see that already we've got uh, this set and this set that has the incorrect sort of naming convention. Well, the naming convention has been applied, but obviously the uh, name is a duplicate. So what I want to do, I want to find out what the rest of them are called before I go ahead and name this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then presumably my dyslexia has kicked in and allowed me to name this one six and the other one seven over here. Slightly stupid. All right. It's not following the correct convention. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six is over there, but six should actually be here. So five, ah, even worse, even worse. All right, okay, fine. So we have increased the amount of pre-work uh, for the stream by one. Sorry. <laughs> All right then. Let me just go ahead and throw a random number onto these, just so that I know that they're going to need to be renamed anyway. The children's names, for some reason, doesn't necessarily matter too much to it, to it, but it's just that the um, the fact that they're on the same level in hierarchy seems to make a difference. Anyways, how many of these will we find? Anyways, let's take a away that weird suffix there. And just check that there isn't any other weird suffix there. Okay, cool. So one, two, and while I'm there, I'm just gonna isolate these so that I can actually see what I'm doing. That's control one uh, to do that, by the way. Unfortunately, it does kind of re reorder it because of the naming convention, but that's okay. Anyway, we know that one, two, three, four, this one should be five. It's been called 12 as a result of the rename. Okay, so we're going to start with that. Great. And then we're going to take this sort of prefix here and then just start copy pasting it along. I mean, simple enough, right? There you go. All right. Next one, number nine, obviously, that becomes six there, copy the prefix over, and then just start replacing it. Okay, there we go. Alrighty then, next one. It does feel a lot faster having something more upbeat, actually. That's uh, very helpful, actually. Right, there we go. Oops, shift. Oh, 
Was this called the same name anyway? Well, apparently his previous name was. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. And this one is nine. Okay. Alright. Okay, hopefully that's fixed that. Alright, let's try again, shall we? <laughs> uh, nope. Ah, yeah, my focus is on. Derp. Alright, there we go. Okay, now let's try. Did we mess up? Yes, there was another uh, name clash. Big weapon 2L. Okay. Big weapon 2L is matching a name here. Ah, yes, yes. Because this. Uh, name convention hasn't been copied over. That's okay. Cool. So, uh, let's just take that whole thing there. Hmm. I'm sure I like this one that much actually. Uh, that one is a little strange. Yes, that one is too. That soundtrack is uh, a little too strange for me. Ironically, it's called Strange Contraptions. Well, that's going away from the pre uh, playlist. Off we go. Yep. Keep that along. Okay, anyways. Admittedly, I did find them all today, so uh, I'm kind of just testing them out. The soundtracks, I mean. Okay. Right, let's see if there was any other uh, duplicate. I suppose while I'm there. Just want to check that there isn't anything. No, okay. Oops. wanted to check if there was a way of like spotting like multiple uh, duplicate names but I guess we could just put we could just uh, for brute force our way through it work uh, one let's go. yep I was bound to mess up at least one here okay nine one nine one five yeah there we go so this one should probably be 10, yeah, because I'm so good at counting. Nah. I think that's... Echo. Apparently, 10-2-R, even. I don't know why I call it that. Two, what? Did I actually do that just now? Oh. That was silly. There we go. And we're just going to keep doing that until we find one that... Uh... Oh, I did a lot of these, I didn't know. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this one apparently shares a name.
And apparently it does. Well, something here does. What? That was a little weird. Just waiting for it to spawn back. Found anything? What did it crash? But it did give an error message. Uh, let me just check if I can get the error message back up. Uh, more than 100 messages name 1301 joint B13R. Just so that I can try and see it. Maybe isolate further. Oh, it's gone into everything. Didn't quite mean that. There we are. Ah, this area. So that should be. Question <clears throat> Air back inner one joint B one three R. Ah, huh? ah, there you are. I see, I see. There we are. Some small thing like that. Even when you think it's done, it's not done. <laughs> Mistakes. Huh? Seeing the duplicate. Oh, 
Oh, there's another one there. That's had the same issue. Right, before I uh, attempt to check, and it seems like there's a consistent issue. Right, okay, so this has been, uh, been a result of like copy paste. So I'm just gonna run through. Just check the ends. A, B, and therefore there should be a C failure around somewhere. What's this one? Ah, uh, something's become unparented. It's a little annoying. That shouldn't have been unparented. Put that back. I can see already there's a bunch of C's. B's that shouldn't be there. So we're going C and then B. Right, okay. Hasn't quite followed my convention. a good amount of those issues ironed out. Try again. Okay, Orient. Probably about, I don't know, 200 bones in there, so uh, it's a fair amount for it to go through. in a 1B16R. Okay, another example there where it's gone and done that.
Okay. Oh. Another one. Hair back out here, join us. Uh, Uh, so over here the name has gone wrong long down there not sure why must have missed it out when i renamed you know outer i'm just going to check that this issue hasn't been <laughs> duplicated across or in fairness how would you check that <laughs> I guess I'd go type in outer and then check hair root if any inner is showing up. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Alrighty, go again. Whoops. Not every bone is selected. Every bone. Do it, do it. Oh, okay. oh, I do have it here. Whoops. What did it? I can't move yet, so. Alter two join A B one R. I mean, this is merely a slowdown. It's not so much an instant, you know. Like if you've hit the point where um, you have to do something all over again, that I would count as like a a death <laughs> in um, rigging, I guess. Anyways, so A four, A five, A B one one. One. Right. Well, clearly that's a dumb idea. Something went wrong there. So I'm just going to collect that and then move the thing and do this. Right, so. There was somewhere along here where, yep, yeah, there we are. So along this chain here, it's not been named properly. So it's gone joint A5 and then it's split. Yeah, so along there it's split and became uh, AB. But the problem is that it didn't increment here. So that should be two, three. And see where it's incremented here. Right, okay. So now that just means that this needs to be incremented along. Six, seven, eight. Ten. All right, cool. There will be another set of bones as well that are going to be doing the exact same thing because they're just copied, I think. And oh, okay, maybe not, maybe not. All right. We keep going. The sooner that we get rid of, like, get over this thing, the sooner that we can actually start doing the, I guess, fun stuff. But the fun stuff is, you know, the actual constraints and the um, controls and, and things like that that allow you to do specific things. Right? This is just the busy work. You think this is a lot of bones. Imagine how many bones are in a Guilty Gear character because they have to move individual um, pieces 
like just individual sections of uh, parts. So it's not just a hand anymore. It's a hand and uh, several vertices that control, you know, how far the finger stretches out or whatever. Maybe maybe that's a bad example. Maybe more like the arm, right? So like on a Guilty Gear character's arm, there might be more bones that actually control the shape of um, like the sort of motion blur that they want to convey across. If you, if you ever look at like a, a Guilty Gear, that is to say the modern Guilty Gears that are on Steam, um, if you take a look at the uh, character art in that, you'll find that there are loads and loads of bones. Just to be able to shape the things like the hands and stuff in the way that they want it to be shaped. Oh, okay, we didn't get an error message. Hey, I think we've done it. All right, so now we can try and get to the point that I was trying to make a good frigate, a good what? Uh, 30 minutes ago? Yeah, all right. So now when we look at the joints and you see how the x-axis is pointing down, and it points down all the way along. Okay. There are going to be some cases where it doesn't necessarily work the way you want it to, in which case you're going to have to uh, adjust it. So over here, for instance, you can see that the palm is pointing towards the next bone here, which is what we want. But the uh, palm, like sort of like the finger curl, if you want to call it that, that controls the way that these fingers are going to curl, um, is pointing towards the first bone. Now it's logical, but it's not sensible for what, I, what we want it to do. So um, there are a number of ways around it, not like that, but over in the uh, orient joints here, we can change that uh, manually via this manual uh, plus rotate and manual minus rotate. So that would just um, cause the uh, axis, well, whichever one we want to increment or, you know, my, minus uh, by an amount, a degree, you know, a set of degrees that we specify. So, um, but obviously the goal is that we wanted to point this way, right, downwards. But what should the other axis be pointing towards, right? What is our, what is our up axis and what is our out axis? And more importantly as well, like, you know, this this y axis is specified specified as up here, but it's pointing inwards. Is that what we want or is that uh, a mistake that uh, has been made yeah. and well ultimately it doesn't necessarily matter what the y-axis is like it could be in or it could be out but your decision on this should be consistent right like if they're all going to be pointing out right like this arm pointing outwards so that what you get is a positive movement, I guess. Well, in this case, it's a negative movement. We can turn it around to become a positive movement. Right? If we're saying that inwards is a positive movement, um, then when it's on the other side, it should be the same, right? But you've got three axes to play with. One of them has to be different. And obviously you don't want twist to be different, you know, you, because that has to point down that way. So I guess like the way that you could say is uh, the one that should be different is the one that obviously isn't, you know, it's not really going to rotate in that direction. So in the, in the instance of like the uh, elbow here, you know, rotate your elbow like this, right? So uh, and not unless it's broken. <laughs> so uh, yeah, like the Z axis, we probably couldn't care too much about if it is pointing in this direction, right? Or is but it can't actually move this way, right? That would make sense to me, but you might have something like the thumb where that is absolutely possible and that it moves in all three directions, sort of, right? I mean, in the x-axis, it doesn't really, but you can't reverse the x-axis the there. So, you know, that, that, that again is also a uh, slight predicament, but, you know, at the end of the day, there's only so much you can do, but, why would we want it to be consistent? Like, why would you not care? Why would you care that it was consistent? And the reason for that is because game engines nowadays are using more and more sort of controls within the engine to control bones. So, I mean, like, we've always had things like turrets being able to connect to a bone and, like, rotate the bone based on some direction. So, like, if it was an AI-guided turret, 
or whatever. Then of course the turret would point towards the player or another thing that he wants to target, whatever, right? So can you imagine that on a scale of character animation or, you know, IK um, rigging or like foot planting, um, that kind of thing, which already happens today. It's been happening for a good 10 years. So that's why you would probably want it to be quite consistent because they're going to apply the same calculations across both uh, legs, for instance, if it were doing, you know, foot planting. Anyway, some technical jargon there. But, for, you know, at the end of the day, we we're only like doing character art here so it's not like it's massive but it would be nice to be consistent so that you know maybe we can apply this elsewhere now right so now that we've got that going most of these will be angled correctly so the only ones that we just have to look for are the weird outliers so in this case things like this these need to be corrected pretty much now otherwise uh, it's going to become very annoying when we start uh, adding on constraints. So, uh, we want to rotate this in the y direction so that this x axis points towards this way. And uh, we would say, oh, maybe about 10 degrees first and then just start playing with it. And clearly, it's not that way. So, put it on this way. So, when I. I would like to get my con rotate controls. Oh, is it because caps are on? No. Or was it on and it was just being weird? I can't see my rotate gizmo. a weird one. Uh, okay. Just gonna check that I, don't, that I can actually see it across other things. Yes, I can definitely rotate. I can definitely use it. It's just I can't see the gizmo. Well, that's that's one we're gonna have to Google. <laughs> All right. Um, Rotate Gizmo disappeared. Right. How oh, strange. Reset at all? Nope. Hmm. That's a little weird. Where is the gizmo? strange sometimes my uh, display ends up showing when I'm like swapping between uh, what do you call it like windows and then like arrow wind like the arrow peak sometimes happens that's really annoying anyways that's weird Then. I'm just going to open up a new Maya and if it turns out that uh, that is the reason, well then we've got another reason to restart Maya. Might very well be that. Uh, 
Uh, lo and behold, our tool comes back, right? Well, uh, apparently Maya re demands frequent restarts. So, anyway. There we go, great. Well, while we wait for the other one to close, uh, let's just go ahead and fix uh, rotations. So. Anyways, so our x axis point this way, our z axis becomes the uh, the axis that is being used to rotate this palm uh, inwards, or like our finger curl rather. And so long as that is the actual intent, um, that's fine. The only problem here is that that doesn't match the sort of intent over here. So there may be some cases where we're going to have to apply on a. Uh, individual level what axis should rotate things in and out right? at the moment right on this elbow it's the y-axis but on this uh finger curl or palm or whatever you want to call it right it's the z-axis which doesn't make much sense right? one of these two has to basically bend things inwards so should it be the y-axis should it be the z-axis well, let's try and uh, assess what we have at the moment, right? Let's try and uh, eliminate as much work as possible. So we've got the y-axis coming up here, All right? Okay. We're not too fussed about um, the hair so much right now, but it's, it would be good to be able to see it. Right? And it might be good to rotate it so that um, in and out is more, you know, inward this way. But again, it's not the ends of the world if they're pointing um, like in sort of world space so long as the x axis is pointing inwards that's fine um, our y axis in this case points out this way our z axis points outwards so in this case a y axis would rotate it more inwards right now and our z-axis would rotate it more side to side. So I guess our frame of reference then, if we like, you know, view it thinking about this uh, world space node okay, and something was pointing uh, towards the x-axis and the y-axis would be what rotates it in and out if we were to like imagine like there's a finger here that with like joints that are pointing towards the x-axis so like instance over here right so we, where we've got these fingers then the z-axis should be the axle um the the axle yeah and then the y-axis would be pointing upwards so in this case this is behaving correctly Although obviously like the y-axis is pointing more inwards, right? So when we rotate this in, we're getting a positive, right? Rather than a negative, which is probably preferable. So with that in mind, we can then start orienting. <laughs> we can start orienting the uh, joints to make sense. Quite need that, that bit. I'm just like accidentally reveal my desktop every time. <laughs> okay. So when this is pointing in, this is on the Y axis. That's on the Z axis there, right? So what if we want... I'm going to go ahead and reference that layer actually while I'm there. Also, while I'm there, I'm going to place um, the bones on its own layer. So, bunk. Or joints, or whichever. It doesn't really matter. There we go, that's a little easier. So, if I were to go ahead and use x axis aim or z, right, on here. Orient. All right, so now that changes, and then our Z axis becomes our sort of in and out, I guess you could say. That really depends on your mindset, though. Um, you know, whether or not that makes sense or not. 
Because after all, over here, on this bone, the y-axis is in and out. Oh, sorry, the z-axis is in and out. Because the, the z-axis forms that uh, axle there. So, it depends whether you view this as your sort of in and out movement, or this is your in and out movement. But I would imagine that if you wanted the character to bend over, you'd want to use the in this movement. And if you want that to be the same as the fingers, then you're going to have to use that. I suppose ultimately it doesn't totally matter, but um, it's worth considering. So. In this case, this uh, z-axis is controlling this uh, outwards, like star jumpy movement, or jumping jack movement if you're an American, um, whereas the y controls this, right? X-axis for this one. Y axis for that. So if we go and take these two to close the, like, sorry, to, to uh, well, I guess you could say close the elbow. It's not really the correct choice of, of curl the elbow, shall we say, instead. Right? As long as they're the same as well, definitely matters a lot. Might also need to be rotated slightly more because it's a bit awkward but I would expect that to rotate towards that well this could be a placement issue because it moved. And when you're doing this and uh, you're trying to move the character's arm, just think about what you're capable of and then what the character should be capable of. So over here, right, when you're rotating your elbow, Right. Should it be able to touch the top of your shoulder? Probably should. I mean, in this case, does it? Well, by technicality, it does. But it can also be a matter of proportion. You know, for instance, if you've got a chibi anime character, it's never going to be able to top the touch the top of its head. Not a chance. You know, understandable. So we're just going to take these two, move them across, well, rather down. Right. And rotate that up. See, it's a bit of a strange curl there still. There's one way to check that. Oh, right. There's nothing. Right. Uh, nope. It needs to be rotated manually. So we're going to take uh, this on z-axis, about mm, five degrees, rotate f this way. It's also not quite straight. Okay, there we go. So that one's done. So because I'm as I'm rotating it, see that that um, is in line. So just gonna. It's on custom. I want it on object. 
right? So when I put it on object, I want it to be able to see what exactly am I getting there. Right, what is it that the object itself can do? Uh, so as I've rotated it on like that, it might not necessarily uh, work in the same way. So we're just going to... Obviously, it's going to be controlled by an IK uh, chain afterwards anyway, but I uh, just want to try and work at it just to make sure that it's all aligned. That's roughly about like five degrees there. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So, Z axis tilts in and out that way. Therefore, we want the Z axis to probably tilt like that. I mean, it depends, right? Like, what your definition of in now is. I guess we could say that that would be in in that sense. Like, but the only problem is, is that in for this? It is not. Does that mean that this should be changed? Hmm. Because that's uh, rotating that way. The Z axis, I mean. Z axis is rotating that way. What it also means is that the Y axis rotates this way, right? So the Y axis is uh, controlling that sort of in and out, or at least what you could think of as an in and out. So when you look at it like this, the y-axis is basically saying that it's going to go in and out like that. However, fingers are using the z-axis to go in and out, right? Spine uses the z-axis. Well, sorry, it goes and uses the y-axis. My apologies. Z-axis is going that way. So if we assume that Y is allowed to dictate the in and out, um, then we can be fine with that so long as it's consistent. So what's our next actual challenge here is to make sure that um, all of them are facing the correct orientation so that when we do go to uh, turn in the Y, right, it's not going awkward. And as you can see, if we assume that Y direction, then our joint is going to rotate this way, right? Which is not what we want because obviously the thumb should not rotate that way. So, uh, rotate positive Y, uh, X even. And there we are. So that when this rotates, it should go along path, right? So when this thumb moves, it will rotate in the correct direction. Same is true with this. This was about, what, three clicks? One, two, three, four, 
Probably a bit fewer more than that. Make those two in line with each other. Seems good to me. All right, save and move on. Next lot. The cool thing about the fingers is that they won't much need much um, supervision. And they just kind of need a little bit. Clearly they're not oriented correctly. So if we just start... Let me just check if this can, carries down to like chil its children. Presumably not. No, it does not. Okay, back to there. Select them. And start... Uh, rotating to make that match up and what we get here if we assume what we ass what we're saying to be a uh, straight away straight down so obviously it's not that it means more maybe it, maybe it was right in the first place and I was actually wrong <laughs> you know? and that seems you know relatively attached so that's okay Next up. A little further. A little further back. Oh, forward. And rotate that. Yep, okay, cool. Alright, is this one uh, pretty much aligned? We'll, uh, we'll allow that. All right. Stop this one. Oh, uh, that Y axis is wrong. All right, so you see that Y here. Ah, uh, yes, yes, I see. So, well, at least that one is easy enough. We tried to, we had uh, tested it and it ended up aligning by Z by accident, so not exactly it, it's not exactly rocket science to work out which uh, value you need to then uh, fix that now whether or not it's a positive or negative direction is the, ne is the next thing I've missed it five times what? am I double clicking by accident? heck did this trigger uh this might be a little bit sensitive, actually. It's a little strange. Not exactly sure why that's happening. Okay. Da -da -da. Yeah, that totally double clicked there. Okay. Right. Hey, bomb bomb. Oh, is it like I can hold it or something? No, it's just that weird. Right, there we go. Rotate that. Yep. Okay. See, now I'm, I'm a little confused as to whether or not it should be the Y axis or the Z axis going in. Is that be that hard to correct? Well, that should probably go. Said this one is Y at the moment. Dunk, 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 dunk. Yeah, so. Up axis of the Y is pointing in that way. Right, okay, cool. Now to clarify, right, okay, and to make sure that I know exactly what I'm doing here, I want my Y axis to be the up axis. So when Z rotates in a positive manner, it should basically be moving towards the Y axis, right? So if I consider this a positive motion, which it is, then it should basically be moving towards the y-axis, right? Okay. That's what we'll go with. 
which means all of that work that I just did then <laughs> needs to be redone. Uh, whoops, wrong way. Yeah. But it wasn't exactly hard work or anything. It's just busy work. But again, the sooner we get this done, the sooner we can move into the fun stuff. But it is important, I think, to detail that this part of the process because it's it die it ties in directly with everything that follows, right? And if any of this is messed up, um, it may like it warrants you know going through and with a fine tooth comb and checking every little axis to make sure that it's all in the correct direction. And then have to mirror that axis over if it was a, a, symmetri a symmetrical uh, bone, and then have to do it again. Yes. Oops. Yeah, that's already oriented that way. It needs to uh, orient this. There we are. Right, so with a, you know, the phi, right? Which direction do you expect positive to be? Should it be going in or should it be going out? You know? And I guess that um, if I were to move something in, I guess, what you might call its natural direction, that is to say, like, inwards like that, I guess that would be a positive action. Whereas if I was to do something like this, it would be a negative action because I'm doing, um, I'm basically pulling. Well, in the loosest sense of that word anyway. So, this, okay. Same true here as well. Okay, so obviously that's not gonna rotate that way, but that's not the point. This does not do that either. Oh wait, is it? Like, sorry, these two would, because that's going to rotate like that. So, I wouldn't expect the, you know, the knee, which is made up of these two. Although maybe that, like in hindsight, perhaps this should be a little higher. But uh, it might, whoop, might be worth making it go a little higher. Just a little, not, not too much. Sorry, that is a maybe it's not maybe it does need to go maybe it was okay at the start well I guess that's what testing is for just leave it at, leave it at what it was at the start and then come back to it if it's an issue right so we might do some skinning but it's not permanent skinning it's more just to test the actual like bone really it's not to actually it's not to um like to actually skin that, that I think is, is a real process that comes later and it is not a process that you want to sit through uh, really okay again same thing here right what is a positive action what is a negative action to you right in this case I think that uh, coming downwards like that is a positive action well it's a high heel you like you know th that doesn't matter it's a high heel 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 yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's a high heel or not. What matters is, um, you know, is it consistent with every other model that you're going to make? Or every other rig you're going to make? Okay, there. Okay, there we go. Save that. Okay. So, Alright, so the legs are done. I'm just going to check the torso as well. At the moment, we've got it on Z for that as well. Yep. Okay. As long as that is what is expected, that's okay. All right. So Z there, Z there. What's not Z? This thing. So what, hap what happens to it? It gets rotated. So if I were to curl... So if I were to curl this in, I expect it to be a positive action. Yep, there we go. Okay, next up. Yep, there we go. Oh, 
something like freeze transform did not apply because there was an incoming connection according to the error there uh, I don't see any I don't see any keys is what I'm saying uh, but it could be that there is like some hidden key somewhere along here or something yes there is uh, obviously the key is the devil it needs to be removed immediately but like if you go over and start um, doing things to bones when they've got a key on you're gonna find it a really really fun or rather not fun time so like, disable the hotkey if you have to because keys are you know basically like save states in that particular position there and uh, that's really not something you want to have uh, used to there right like if you're um, rigging something and something is bound it's gonna get real annoying real fast okay so this one here which I think is the tongue uh, yes which I forgot to make so I had to make it kind of quickly today uh, Alright, so same deal here. Bang. Okay, because I want its uh, roll movement to be its sort of in and out. Of course, you can't forget uh, this stuff as well, right? Like these uh, sort of facial joint um, pieces. Okay, so you see how they're pointing in basically the same direction. Um, not really what you want. So we're going to have to decide kind of um, carefully what we actually want from them. At the moment they're all pointing in the same direction in the x-axis y-axis the z-axis is like uh looking like that now to be fair they are also uh basically points they're just points that we would translate but at the same time they also got a roll um and you don't necessarily want them to roll in a bad direction that being said most of it is going to be driven through like a driven key anyway so it doesn't necessarily matter so long as the driven key at the end of the day is correct but you know if we do start getting into interesting times where rigs do need things in the correct direction then it's going to be very interesting how that's dealt with uh rotate minus yep yeah. so that's currently pointing that way I imagine that you know auto rigging like I think Adobe Maximo is bound to make a lot of this easier but um, Maximo I don't think is going to be able to uh, adjust for everything but I've never used the program before but uh, more likely than not I imagine that if your character has particularly interesting you know like characteristics or appendages or whatever it's not necessarily going to uh, capture that and you're probably going to need to uh, go back to you know Maya at some point anyway even if it's just like you know for correction I'm just gonna add two more sort of cheekbones there just like that something like that Cheek inner, cheek inner, out. Right. Okay, cool. So that way, like, uh, makes certain movements easier. Anyway, save that. Yeah, at the end of the day, that's pointing in a very particular direction. So hopefully, it shouldn't be too much of a bother. Where's this? Um, should be a set of teeth here. There we are. While we're there, I'm going to grab the lower and upper teeth as well. Although they should really be called teeth upper and teeth lower, but whatever. Um, and as you can see, because they're end bones, they don't have a real defined direction. Right? And you see, it just points any old direction because there's no bone for it to target. Right? So we have to give it that one then.
Oops. So that faces pretty much that way, that's okay. Followed by this one. Which basically does the same thing, right? So if I were to rotate lower teeth, sorry, uh, I would expect that when I rotate it um, in a particular axis, in this case the Y axis, it's going to be able to go up and down. Or perhaps it needs to be the, I think that it needs to be the Z axis doing that really. So um, again, that's super easy. Going to decrease there. Both of them. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. There we are. Okay, save. Off we go. Right. Super tedious, but I'm hoping we can actually make a star on controls today. Right, upper eye lower. Cheekbones, eyeball, right, I'm interested in this one. Might be worth isolating down to a particular uh, part, actually. So this is the upper eyelid, right? The x-axis is already pointing towards that. That's good, but it's not... It might not be ideal. I mean, it's okay. Um... That's probably okay, but it should the z-axis should probably be uh, rotated 90 degrees as well. Yep. Same goes with lower. In this case, the x-axis is not necessarily pointing in a useful direction. Um, so I want to grab both of these things. And I can see that clearly they're not really unified in that respect. Um, which is pretty bad. So. Orient, Orient. No. That's clearly not the direction that we want. And what's the positive di direction for this? In this case, it's opening. I'm not sure that we want that. I think that closing should be the positive direction. Opening should be the negative direction, right? Okay, so that sets that as basic and then do, do that twice. Uh, once more. Nope, wrong way. Now, an opening this is a negative direction. Not what I want. Rotate that way again. Opening is a positive. Nope. Opening. Eh? What? Yeah. yeah. Wait. I'm real good at confusing myself. Ah, I see what's. Yes, yeah, because the. Uh, that's why that was confusing. Because the x-axis was locked in that direction, it needs to be locked here. Well, you know, at least roughly. So. Rotate Y about 10 degrees. Negative, no positive. About that much, yep. Same's true over here. Rotate Y. Not like that, though. So there we are. Okay. Then rotate Y. Um, Ten. And it's that way. One. Two. There we go, right? So, the, like, now that I've got, like, an actual dual object to show you, right, when I rotate on the Z-axis, I am expecting one action. In this case, adding positive values is supposed to close the eyelid, 
right? Obviously, then you would apply some corrective stuff on the eyelash area later, then later, right? But if I want to blink with both eyelashes, you know, like a normal person, or obviously the lower eyelid moves a little less, right? I would do this. I would expect this to be uh, going along as I tweak the z-axis in one direction. If, however, this was uh, like the wrong way, so in this case, uh, 90 degrees on x-axis, I think, yeah. So 90 this way. Right, so if I've pointed the z-axis that way, right, and then what I do is try to rotate it, now I just rotate the whole eyelid, which is wrong. Um, you know, like why, why do that when, um, when I can just say z-axis rotating that way, or, yeah, oops, I've gone too far in my undo. <laughs> Where is it? Yeah, there we go. So when I rotate on this Z axis, it should then mean that I intend to close the eyelid, right? That's what I'm describing. Okay, so that bit's done. Next up, uh, X out, X out, yep, X out, out. We've also got Z up. Now these pieces don't necessarily rotate and they're X out is pretty much like strictly speaking um, X out like this. However, at the same time, they also are um, positional, like they're, they are tweaking um, joints. So we essentially like say that this eyelid is closing and then we just move them and rotate them according to what we need, right? So the only thing that we just need to be is consistent. Um, However, it would be good if they were rotated the proper direction, I guess. So, you know, what exactly does that mean here? Not a lot. Like most of this is just going to be position and correct. It has not much bearing in terms of uh, the like correct direction so long as obviously the out is still a uh, X and that the Z is consistent with all of them the Y is consistent with all of them and the X is of course consistently outwards so this is probably okay all right it's just that um, rotating it should still you know be, be in the same direction I think it would be good if they, like, this one's going out like this. But then as you get there, it's not quite like that anymore. Um, works more for this, sorry, it works for this row. It doesn't really work for the bottom uh, instead because they're all pet racing, sorry, facing a different direction there. So... What we'll do, start by like going around uh, 2.5 or something, and we want to rotate on Z axis, oops, 2.5, rotate negative, go is it that way, nope, mm, this way. What I want is that when I look at this uh, eye sort of head on, right, like actually head on to the eye, not he uh, front, right? I then should expect to see that they're pointing outwards, I guess. So <clears throat> if we were to imagine this is like single point perspective, I am expecting that this is gonna face more to the left, right? I guess. Sort of like that. And I can see as well, 2.5 on Y, nope, 2.5 on Y. Well, maybe, maybe at least a little, something like that, and then Z, there. Oops, go away. 
Oh, there we are, right? Because uh, might need a bit more on the Y as well, just to point it upwards a little. Mm, just a little bit. Wait. I still want to be able to... Uh, Oh, wait, oh, wait. Again, there we go. So, like, when I'm looking at it like this, and I want to apply like corrective uh, animation, like driven keys, right? I should be able to move this along in its like considering its world um, position. So it'd be like like here, right? It's an it's pointed in object, and it's just like um, aligned to its like particular normal, right? If that makes sense. No, it doesn't really. Let me try again. So basically what I'm saying is that when I go to move these using this uh, indicate like this piece of uh, this handler, right? It should be moving almost in like a plane along this eye. And of course I can pull it out as I need to, right? I should be able to say that this axis means that I'm coming out from the face, not from uh, just world normal. Sorry. Right? Not just from like the world normal like that. I'm hoping that makes sense. That's the kind of thing I'm trying to get at. With the, with the lips, maybe not so much, right? Because that the, these things move all sorts of directions. So so long as they're all facing the direction, the same direction, and mostly the lips are kind of facing this, the same area anyway. So it's kind of fine. With the eyelashes, I don't think that's as much of a possibility right same goes over here as well should probably be um like tweaked to face that that particular plane but again you have to remember that the eyelid the eyebrow even is attached to the uh, skull but obviously um you don't want it to you know behave improperly like phase through things or whichever Anyways, let's get that rambling now. Like such a such a mad hurry to explain our uh, um, goal that we forget to just move. Gotta move, right? Okay. Oops. The head and the brows. Yeah, there we go. Alrighty, and as you can see, right, they're not pointing any particular direction. So we've got to fix that. 90, maybe 45 might be more appropriate, although clearly not that direction. Uh, y axis, 45, blunk, not quite that way. Again, like, I want these to face the same direction, but I want it to be, right, as if it was on a plane like this, right? Ten. Wait. To the back. I mean, it's not got to be exact, but just reasonable. Okay, and now rotate uh, the z-axis ten degrees. Zero that. Positive. Yes. A little less though. So something like that, right? And then finally, our. Uh, Z axis, which is fixed by this, we'll put it about mm, four, three, five. Uh, we'll try five for now. Take that negative. There we go. Right, so that's putting more. Oh, it's all low. Maybe a little less. There we go. Right, so when I move this up, it goes straight up, goes in, out, according to almost like this face normal. I mean, it's like, you know, it's very approximate, but we just need it to be close enough. Right, that looks done. Okay, got a whole bunch more to fix. So let's make a start. X that way, Y in out. Um, no can do, I think. I think that the Y axis should be uh, treated as in out. No, no. Y axis, y -axis in this case is the up 
uh, vector, but its actual rotation will cause it to go side to side. So, uh, and as you can see, they're pointing that way, but they're not pointing in the uh, sort of like towards this. And that's the bit that I guess we're going to need to fix, which can be problematic. So, auto guess up direction might be interesting to have there. And you can see that it works a lot better with that. So with this sort of circular um, skirt object, you might want this. The only problem, of course, is this thing. I have a feeling that auto guess up might not... Mm, okay, okay, okay. It doesn't do anything to it, actually. But those might have to be set more sort of manually. We'll see. Oh, the land. Let all the skirt object here, so like that. They are all attached to this bone. So by going and saying auto guess up direction, they're gonna point that way, right? So when I rotate on Z, as you can see, it's going side to side. Obviously, not what I want. So this one, we're going to pretend that the Z axis is the up direction, go orient joints, there we go. And now Z will become the, uh, you know, in and out rotation, right? And then the Y will become our side to side. Pretty cool. Okay. But did this work for the little things over here? Presumably not, right? So this, these little, like, little bits at the bottom do kind of need a little help in that respect. It's not quite as easy, unfortunately, as uh, just being able to say that. Although, as you can see, it, not, it doesn't necessarily work for all of it. It worked for this, but then it didn't work for this. So it didn't work for the children so much. That or I just apparently needed to select it. Apparently. Although, it, yeah, just checking that it didn't like, produce a different result. And even then, that's a little weird. I mean, that's a little, like, strange to me, like the direction that it's going. So if I go over and just say, turn auto guess off, it aligns to the world. Okay. World up direction, apparently here is... That's a bit strange. We're going to try this as well. Didn't do very much for me. Neither did that, although it's probably because auto guess up direction is on. Like that. Nope, not at all. Alright, cool. Leave that then. Presumably where there is a bit of a kink in the uh, chain, so in this case over here, right, you're going to get a slightly stranger result. Maybe better if, um, for instance, if it was just like curved and then copy pasted without too much uh, control. But what you might get then is a little bit more of a general uh, curve. It might be better off just like manually rotating these uh, so that they face that direction. Wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. And then, of course, there's no getting around it. These little uh, parts at the end do need to be rotated. At the very least, you know, checked.
These ones worked though, so that's pretty good. The only problem is this one did not. Probably afford to put this on like 45. Probably should have went the other way. That should be okay though. Yeah. Okay. It's that direction. The only problem is that um, this one's got like a bit of a kink in its uh, directionality. Might be worth just moving that in a bit. Presumably it's where I've gone and attempted to make it match the geometry more. Like, and you know, potentially that can be a mistake. Potentially, but you know, it's a process of, uh, you know, experimenting and also, you know, checking, right? You're not going to learn unless you make the mistake in the first place. Also could probably be oriented a little. Um, on the y-axis actually. Well, at the same time it is also trying to face the bone so... Obviously facing the completely wrong direction. I mean, it can sometimes be fixed by hitting the cons that button, but not always. It's about Twenty degrees, actually. See over here as well, we've gone and made it so the inner is negative. Not sure that's what we want to be doing. It might not be. Um, but at least it's easy enough to fix. So that now these are moving. Oh, hang on. Yeah, positively that way, negatively that way. Yes. I mean, it depends. As long as you're consistent. In this case, I'm saying in is a Z positive, I think. So. But yeah, this is very important to set up. Still slow though, still very slow uh, at working it. Not gonna lie. Looked a little weird. Looked a little bent. I 
orienting it and then rotating it around but clearly that's not I mean it it is correct it's just a little weird looking That's obviously wrong. This one's wrong. There we go. Do that one. About 45 degrees would be good now. Maybe negative five, though. this a little um, just so that we can finally actually tackle some uh, bones because you know even I'm sick of like just standing like constantly editing like bones and not actually getting to the controls so we'll carry the stream on a little longer not, not that much longer maybe like 30 minutes but anytime you see that you've gone over and accidentally done something on the uh, by like right clicking uh, undo immediately <laughs> Right, there we go. Okay, next up. So, in this case, Y is currently that direction, which you don't really want. I'm gonna select all of its children. Go here, 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 here. Orient. There you go. So now, Z out. Out, yep. Now the real question here, right? Like, do you orient your Z to be like this? Or do you orient it so that it points to the old bone? Like, in relation to it, right? And the answer, I think, is that this movement should be, you know, in and out horizontally, like when we're modifying Z. So, like that, basically. It also means that by extension it's going to need to be that for this. This one we do actually have to tweak. So this one, uh, Y direction, maybe like 20, zero there. Check it, boom, boom. Right, so we go. That doesn't really explain very much. Like we're just basically pointing it so that the, the uh, this is going like horizontally, this is going horizontally, this is going in a a vertical like a diagonal and then this will go straight down right makes sense to me so yep so long as z-axis definitely means that that should be all good all right okay so we've done all of that we've done that right, we're on the last sort of uh level i guess for this most of this should be okay but as you can see right is for clearly need a reorient. Not exactly difficult. But yeah, so now the not quite for all of it though. Um 
but most of it has been corrected just to account for the rest so in this case it's got is that the right one for a start no, apparently it's this one right okay so when I go that way you can see that it like you know curves the wrong way that's like got half and half set up basically so Z axis this way okay Z axis has gone and curled this way not what we want uh, X axis 10 degrees or something like that zero that check that okay cool back back up Try and get that in line with the other one might not though okay and the next one clearly that's a uh, like 90 degree ish angle that it's going at another one it's probably okay that way as well there you go Okay, same thing here. Uh, most of this looks um, pretty good, of course. You have gotta do it. Bonk. That way. So most of this should definitely have the Y axis pointing upwards. Right, which would be very good if they all did that. So when we go to rotate Z, right, you get that. And if we rotate across like you know on like freely you know we can make all sorts of shapes with that right so then when we go to use a curve deformer thing right it shouldn't have any issue it should all just follow the curve it probably would anyway but you know it's just all you know if you were going to manipulate that in game engine right you definitely want them to be consistent especially if uh, you know a straight line that's why they're mostly done as a straight line i mean that's not exactly like a hundred percent straight line but you get the point Looking at that, that's not been misaligned. It looks like it has been though. And the reason that it's been misaligned is presumably because of some correction that we've made elsewhere. Right? So it is just a case of uh, moving it and you know basically resetting. And we'll probably have to freeze the transforms on it as well. Which means we have to reorient them again. But well, that's just what that is. As long as they're in the correct position. Because you'd definitely rather the. You would rather have to do, do your like slight correction and your freeze transform and redo the orient if you have to. Then the alternative which is bind everything realize it doesn't work unbind you know do your correction and then rebind and then find that it doesn't work the same way you know things like that where you didn't have to do your paint by painting again that would probably not be fun to do so um probably best this was along the arm right so we'll just say about here and find it and as you see right it goes all of those orients uh, you know change so you just want to make sure that the head orients again and most of this will be okay Yep, you see that because uh, we, we know that from that point we wanted the z-axis to be the uh, axle and also we had auto guess up direction on as well so most of that will be basically correct there will be some some uh, you know parts that we do have to um, correct up for it but you know very minor in comparison like that yep that was pretty minor and it's probably true over here that's probably in a decent direction for that to go in it's okay I think it's aligned well enough so this bit here this lot probably could use some extra alignment so it's gonna be slightly careful with it 
here, I think a little bit to the right. Or it was good. Probably about like that, yep. And take this lot. Uh, did it again. <laughs> freeze, freeze. Freeze transformations, there we go. Uh, Orient. Just check the uh, direction on this thing. It's obviously going in the wrong direction. That's okay. Rotate that by like 10. Take that off. Rotate. Not like that. Zero that. Uh, 10 degrees that. Push that towards that way. Okay. Just checking I need to move that over? Probably. Some of these could be used, being like moved over just a little bit. And screen space, at least, so not too bad. Okay, wait, those moved over, just get them only. Freeze them. You see how that changed? Okay. May, not, may or may not be what you want. In this case, clearly not, though. <laughs> so, what do you do about that? Well, if you start from the opposite side and go freeze. Okay, here you go. And then next slot. Freeze. I'm hoping that froze, but I'm going to just double check by just making sure that I definitely clicked it. Yep. Okay. Next slot. Freeze. And you see how that changed there? Okay, so those were your, uh, those were the problem area. And then finally select all damn, orient joints, bang. Most of that will now be perfectly okay. And it looks that way too. Yep. Go. Is this in its correct location though? Shaded, uh, yes, I guess. Could use some correction though. That one seems okay. That one could go up a bit. That one could go up a bit. That one could go. Okay. Take those four. Prism. Orient. Ah. You see that? Orient doesn't work on the very end, so you gotta select the ones just above it. I think it sort of helps them to steal it. Well, maybe not. <laughs> not quite. Go ahead and take those four instead. Orient. Reverse that. So I reversed the uh, uh, z-axis, but clearly that's not worked because you can see that the z-axis is now pointing that way. Not what I want. Uh, go again. Bonk. There we go. That was what I meant for this one. But as you can see, it's starting to creep a little. Freeze that. Orient. See that it's very inconsistent there. I don't want that inconsistency. So we take the order guess off, orient again. Okay, so that make give, gives us that. Take reverse off. My T. And the way to do this is select all of those. X axis 10 degrees. Zero that. And then just rotate it according. So that it matches the, uh, you know, the normals of the finger. That one looks like it's matching up okay, but from what I can see, I understand that it's hard to see though. Okay, that one looks okay, and uh, that one looks pretty much okay too. All right, cool. 
Okay. Now I can see that this one has obviously been incorrect. Like it's been reset in a horrible way. Uh, so what is this? That is neck ribbon one. I'd like to know when the other one went. Oh wait, yeah, 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 yeah. I see, I see. All right, cool. So let me just select that and the other, like the neck ribbon. Ribbon, bump. You can see quite clearly that that's incorrect. I wonder what would happen if I freeze it. Not a lot. Well, obviously it's still in the wrong direction. So we're just gonna have to realign it. Thankfully though, it looks like it was only like messed around with on its Z direction. It looks like it lines up reasonably well, you know, within reason. But still needs to be adjusted so that it's uh, properly set. That being said, an object that thin is always going to have some level of crossover. I mean, it's only got that many bones in it. Now we got that. Now, freeze transformations. There we go. Seems to make sense. Now, when we look, we want the x axis pointing down. Go ahead and orient that. Yes sense was made there but it just needs the z-axis that way there we go there that goes we can also auto guess the up if we really want to try again uh, because the z is going that way let's change it reverse it might not necessarily work though but it looks like it's worked okay up to that point and then stopped working so I would rather just you know go with this right not not that sorry that where the x-axis is clearly pointing in the correct direction and z is pointing you know reasonably correct right there's not much left for me to do there but that's pretty good I'm pretty sure, right? If I, like, you know, freeze it after, it's gonna zero it out, right? So I don't want to do that. Once I've, like, um, froze it already and then apply my orient, I don't need to freeze it again after. Because then that will actually change the joint, you know, to face zero, zero. Uh, that is... Y. Oops. Ten. Zero. Okay. So we've done quite a lot of that already. That's good. Most of this will probably be able to resolve its, you know, kind of themselves with only minor amounts of like pressing going on. Okay, so the uh, this should probably be okay. Shouldn't need to do that much tweaking to it. I mean, because it's it's on its own, right? I have to define it myself. So, quite simple. I just look at the actual thing. Right, okay, dirt, y, 90 degrees. You probably have more, uh, like, bones there if you really want to, but I think only one's probably going to be okay. Okay, okay. Just need to find this bone. Up over here. Literally below what I was looking for. But it was up there like that. Anyway. Okay, so you see that is okay that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you're in direction really depends on what you mean by in in this uh, context so this lot right, in terms of the x direction of course they face they face perfectly fine their z direction though 
right? Faces like all over. Um, this ultimately depends on whether or not you think that it should um, rotate in a particular way, but right now um, it would be ideal. Like Z all here is all going in, and that's probably okay. Um, that's okay, and then that is kind of okay. But to do like, if say it was being affected by the wind, we're going to find that really hard to suggest that. Right now, anyway, we would then have to change it to world and then modify it like that. That kind of works. It works to a degree anyway, until this side decides to rotate the other uh, direction. So like if we go like this, yeah, that seems okay. Pop down, yeah, that's okay. But when we use like the wheel, it's a little more Okay, like the ball, sorry, like the track ball kind of aspect of it. So if we just say, okay, we'll just like whenever we want to um, move these like in a simultaneous direction, like say wind or something was affecting it, then we just move it uh, in world space and that would be probably be okay. Probably be all right. Continuing the journey upwards, uh, X up down, yeah, okay. Wait, Z up down, Z up down, okay. This is pretty much the same as well, yeah. That's okay. We've done the arm already. But then in out, where's that axis? Looks like Z, Z. Yep, okay. Pretty sure we resolved the junk tongue already. We did. We resolved the teeth already. This uh, direction is not quite what we want. We want it to be rotated 90 degrees on X. Okay, 90 degrees. Zero is that. Okay. I want to get at least one control done. Well, not well. At least you know installed. I think we did the eye already, or at least we did the eyelids. Eyelid, low eyelid, yep. Yep, we did that one already. Eyeball then uh, is over here. Now, obviously, we don't want the X direction to be pointing in some random direction. We also can't rely on auto guess up to do everything for us here. So, we want to orient the joint in a very specific direction. Um. That can be quite tricky. So, what might be good here is for us to actually define the rotation ourselves. But uh, that can be a little tricky. It might even involve some like mel script. For now, um, might be worth doing. We freeze this. Actually, if we try, like, what happens if we rotate this way and then freeze? Not a lot. Yeah, unfortunately. Okay, okay. Uh, rotate uh, joint orientation. So some things you just end up just having to look for. Uh, in this case, apparently you would go into component mode, uh, but we need the, uh, the joint rotation visible, or sorry, the local rotation axis visibility, right? And then you go into F8. I think we select this thing. Yep, well, of two. Um, there is that. Be a question mark here somewhere. Ah, there we are. Miscellaneous component. This thing. There we go. Now, okay, so that was just a, a quick googling just to remind myself how to exactly do this. So F8 gets you into the component mode, which is pretty normal. Um, you can you use that all the time, but you normally use it via the uh, right-click menu. But then 
you have to enable miscellaneous objects and expose the uh, local rotation axis. The local rotation axis comes from uh, display, um, transform display, local rotation axis. Hold control shift down when you go to select this and it will add it to the uh, shelf, whatever shelf is selected. I like to put it on rigging because that makes sense. So um, here now we can just directly control what this should actually be. Hello, I've gone and accidentally moved. What? Ah, whoops. Yes, yes. I was slightly dumb. So I need this thing to be facing an absolute direction. Got an absolute transform here of XYZ. That's not what I want. And I imagine that because at the moment it's frozen like that, that's not really what I want. If I try bake pivot, cannot do that. Okay. Nope. Um, reset transformations? Not quite. I want to rotate it in absolute direction. Uh, da, 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 da. Check where exactly am I looking? I want this to face um, basically straightforward, but I'll need that to be kind of absolute. Uh, however, what it's worth remembering is that when you do go to apply the constraint to the uh, joint, you can have a offset um, and you can default that to be whatever the offset is so that if it was just to, you know, point at an object and you've got the object straight in front of it, then it can be, you know, forgiving. But it would be nice to make sure that it actually faced, you know, literally zero. The only problem with this is that it is, like, absolute right now. So, if we hit that... If we put also guess on, nope. That's a little uh, <coughs> problematic. The only problem is like uh, with Maya is that it becomes very difficult to rotate something in an absolute way. absolute in a in the world space so to speak right because even though you do have absolutes they always are in relation to whatever parent object is controlling them which in this case is this right so that can be a bit problematic and one thing we might be able to do is Give myself back the... 
I just want to put down a, not a locator. Oh, there we are. Okay, so this joint, um, if I were to look at its local rotation axis, right, I see pretty clearly it goes X, Y, Z, right? So I want to rotate this uh, 90 in Y. All right, and I'm gonna borrow it for a bit. Then I want to get that I get that, what's that, why is that over there? Weird. Um, that eyeball. Eyeball, there we go. And the first thing I want to do is move that to that object there. Yep. So that, not in component mode. Uh, match transformation, no, no, no. Snap align. Uh, put align objects or match to if it's mm, not exactly right nope um app together nope oh oh wait hang on that, that pulled the tool up never mind snap together bonk to bonk maybe nope not quite Uh, I suppose it's an easier way of doing this. There you go. Why didn't I just think of that? All right, so there's this joint, which is, of course, our random joint here. I'm just making it big so that I can see that. And what I want is that that this eyeball is going to take this object's uh, transform. So I'm just going to... Aaron, well, not like that. Um, like that. Parent that. So now this object takes that. Well, I'm not sure exactly what this box is there. Um, so there we are. Point two has eyeball in it. I want to continue and I want to orient join there. Right. So now when I look at it on its own, there we are. Perfectly, you know, X, Y, Z at nothing. Right? Or at least it looks like it. <laughs> and then now we take the eyeball join throw it back over to uh where are you the head base i think it is yeah it's gotta be put it back there by hitting p just to parent it back throw our old joint away and look at it now okay, so that faces perfectly in the uh x x, x direction that way right, and we rotate it around and it'll be all fine brilliant like the eyelids should be in the same pivot point but they don't necessarily need to be this exact same rotation they should rotate according to what their eye shape is however the eyeball needs to be facing straight ahead if we're going to put a locator or whatever um ahead of it to then uh snap onto you can get away with an approximate and a, an offset a little bit but you know probably best that it aligned to the object in the first place so yeah all right we've done that bit now hair is subjective i think like because you're in and out on hair in this case is not really going in and out but at the same time when you want to control where it's going do you necessarily want to be able to uh rotate it like to flare in and out like that in fairness though, most of this looks like it's going to be quite simple, um, just a simple uh, orient, just turning it to orient the other way. That should hopefully be enough. As we go through our hair root object, which is everything, I'm just going to save before I mess anything up. Wrap all the hair and aim axis, up axis is Y, we'll set it to Z just to try. And auto guess direction, we'll leave that on just to see. And that will take a while to go through. Ooh. 
We're gonna keep this up for about um, an extra 30 minutes from now. I've got a meeting after. So, I'm really hoping we can get through to at least add one constraint and a full skeleton and everything. So, hopefully so, but we'll see. All right, so I'm just gonna turn LRA on it for everything there. All right, so X down, Z out, that's okay. Most of this should be okay. I don't see why it would necessarily be transformed incorrectly, but some of it may well do. Like clearly some of it has, but we start uh, rotating on the Z. You see how it starts uh, messing around a little bit. So clearly not, not effective. Just gonna undo it. Mm. I can't remember exactly when this meeting is done. I think it's in like 30 minutes. <clears throat> uh, take auto guess direction off. Leave that on. Hit orient and see. Okay. So now what we get is that they all face um, kind of in the same direction, which isn't necessarily what you want. So as we go over when we do this, right, they all go in the same direction. Now, um, arguably consistent, but if we wanted to do that, we could probably have done that in world space. So really that's, you know, I guess that's uh, a call you can make. At the end of the day, I guess like you're gonna modify that according to what you actually want to do with it. But some of this might be quite useful to have uh, on that particular axis like that. And it definitely works for the back, but for the front stuff, um, well, I guess we can judge that. Uh, more individually, right? So let's say this fringe piece here, uh, which is where barely see it. Oh, it's something like, not aligned, probably, apparently. Oh, right, okay. Did it get misaligned during a freeze? That's the case, I didn't spot it. That would be particularly uh, bad if it did. It looks like those fringe pieces from there had misaligned and we didn't and I didn't spot it so okay well that's that's uh, on me I guess uh, try and align it back try to we can try something with assume preferred angle not quite and also tried to do it to that as well that's not exactly what I wanted by right here <laughs> that's strange perhaps if we zero out the rotation About over here, like for the, what if we selected the whole thing, right? right. Go there. Yeah. Nope. Oh, what I'm after. Alrighty then, fine. Try and get it aligned up then. Just 
undo that first, then do this. Right? Because it'll probably work better if I leave that a bit alone. Rotate it like that, rotate it back in, because it looks like it's only one bone that's messed up. And then it's just a case of aligning it to the rest. Well, hey, you know, that's just what happens. All right, so if we do that now, freeze, what happens? Yeah. The angles go a little out of whack, but that's okay. We can just uh, rotate, uh, orient our joints after. Okay. And then when we go ahead and do this, yeah, works. Okay, cool. So it's... When you, when you look at it at first and you go, oh dear god, all my work is ruined, right? I've got to do X, like all that again. The fact of the matter is just analyzing it um, and, you know, work out, logically speaking, what went wrong. In this case, it's just that the top bones over here seems to have messed up. But the uh, bone, like, you know, the, the child bones haven't messed up, right? So... So long as we just orient it to be the correct angle, right? So in this case, that would probably go this way, actually. Yeah, it probably makes more sense that it goes that way. So we just try and uh, align that up again better. Remember, it's just, you know, it's just hair bones. It's not like it has to be exact. This has to be behind the main uh, bones there. But it's not like you need to be perfectly center. It'd be good if you were, but you know, it's not a massive requirement. Ultimately, they only control a small thing. So, not worth like, stressing too hard about them. Okay, so there we go, like that. Bring them back. Test Z axis. All good. Right, they're only gonna move a small amount. Might be good to hide the rest of the bones from here as well, actually. They're getting in the way a little. Hide them like that. And then while I'm there, I can't really hide the rest of those without just like, doing this. There you go, that, that makes sense. Alright, cool. We'll unhide them later. So, and it's all in problem solving. You know, you, you what looks like a bad, like absolutely horrible problem then becomes a relatively trivial annoyance. But, um, there are cases, yeah, where that does indeed happen, in which case, uh, I hope you got a previous save, which I haven't been making here, actually, that's pretty bad. Alright, okay, that was alright, let's just freeze that. Okay. It does look a little kinked up, though, so I'm just gonna orient the joints, then unkink it a little something like that hopefully and freeze it again which is obviously going to change it a little not by much and select that and there we go like it could also go a little bit further that way freeze is it all actually on there? And orient. Try the Z axis. It's a little bit jank though, as you can see that it's not facing the uh, direction that way. So I'm just going to try auto guess and then look again, and that's okay. And it probably could be said for this thing as well. So like that, it orients inwards slightly. That's probably okay. Um, it doesn't need to like a hundred percent line up to that exact middle point here you know it's hair it's not a, a mechanical leg right there is some level of free freedom and play in that right? whereas because this one's uh slightly more 
off center it should probably do that if we intend to uh you know rotate it inwards but most of the time you'll probably be rotating it on world anyway so uh you know it's good to have the option all right next up this one Up a bit, up a bit. Something like that. Probably a little aggressive though. It could be rotated in from there a little, out from there a little, just to sort of help it reach the bottom a little more. Go ahead and freeze these transformations. And while I'm there, I'm gonna freeze it for the rest of them and check that they don't move. Yep, okay, they're all good. Orient load joints. There are auto guesses up. Uh, and you see here as well that the um, that it's messed up. So just gonna fix it a little. little. I'm gonna check that one as well actually while I'm there. That one's fine. Try it. Hey, there we go. Stole it from there. Right, cool. Last one. Hopefully, I didn't mess up the uh, other stuff over there. We'll check that after. But we're nearly there. Ooh, nearly there. Yeah, I think this uh, music's working a lot better, actually. Um, although it, I did like the peacefulness of the previous sort of selection. Uh, at the same time, like. The problem is that after you've done a whole day of like SQL programming and um, you know banging your head against um, you know web and other you know stuff like that, it's like you feel you do feel kind of tired. So you know when you've got um, something like that, although it is a very calming experience, it's also very um, you know like it's just sort of encourages you to be tired which you don't really want to be doing when you're trying to stream stuff you know you, you're nodding off mid work um, when you shouldn't be anyway raise that stuff there right and orient that all right all right There we go. All right, so that's fine. Unhide all of the bones. So now that we've got all of that in there, just checking really sort of loosely on the uh, hair there. There is something that is a little weird here, I guess. When I see this, Seems a little strange. Wondering what on earth that is. And I can see that that has become misaligned that way. Other than that, it's not that much of a problem. It's just a little, little weird hiccup that it's done there. But that's okay. Minor setback, if anything. Pretty minor. The other one looks fine-ish. Probably do with being set back a little as well, though. Yep. That seems okay. We'll just go ahead and freeze those. Oh, modify, freeze, there we go. Hmm. 
Here's that. Orient again. Check your direction. Not entirely uh, the best direction though. Take it again. Seems to make sense now. Stop. So I should probably do that. There we go. Oops, 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 oops. This lot. Try again. Yep, yeah, alright. I freeze, what does that do? Nothing, cool. And, alright. Seems okay. The rest of them seem fine. You can probably try and go with that. The only thing is this bit's a little forward. Pull that back a little bit. Uh, pull these three back a little bit in terms of like their origin. There you go. For that thing, yep, there we go. Freeze, have a look. Okay, we're good. Orient, go. Okay, good. Right, so that basically finishes off the actual orienting of this half of the skeleton. You can imagine it takes this long to do this many bones. But now, finally, you can actually start mirroring it over. So, easy stuff first, right? I think you can only do one at a time. I'm not 100% sure on that. But, uh, that. Over in rigging. Skeleton. This thing should, if it's not already there, it was. Well, whatever. Um, probably delete that now. This was over there. Now, this needs to be set up before we uh, change anything. And remember what, like this, uh, basically is the mirror plane so in this case we want a mirror based on like if we put a mirror there in that sort of like square we want a mirror so that this stuff moves over there okay so yz it is of course the actual uh you know search and replace function should obviously find underscore r and replace with underscore l apply and off it goes all right now what you immediately notice Right? When you've clicked on this and you see that the directions are reversed because it's mirrored, right? Not ideal. So, you know, that whole spiel that I've gone on about, right? About, you know, rotating joints. Right? So you see how when I rotate this, this is okay, right? It's okay. Um, checking out I'm not cheating with world space, right? Um, because this and this, angle make perfect sense right the z-axis make perfect sense when i go to rotate the y though it may or may not be what you want right you might want for um when you rotate it in uh that it rotates in like this in this case we actually do want it to be like this right but we might come to an example where this actually is not ideal and even then the problem as well the x-axis is in the completely wrong direction Right? which is not consistent so you know say for instance that you want a uh, point like you've you've mirrored over your eye eyeballs for instance right so in fact we can do that so if we go to the uh, eyeball wherever the hell it is <laughs> the eye right okay eyeball R and we apply that yep okay it makes perfect sense right there you go and one's pointing that way and the other one's pointing that way right imagine what happens when you use an absolute uh constraint like you put a like a box here for the character to look at and your like this eye is going to line perfectly with it with the x-axis and the other one is going to look backwards so oof right now some of this is uh correctable really easily um in this case our y up direction can simply be assigned like you know a different value and it will rotate it along however 
um, one of these angles is going to be the opposite, or rather, like, you know, it's going to, like, be the same as the other one. Now, whichever one you do that with is up to you, uh, I guess, but this depends entirely on what you need for that particular joint to do, I think. Uh, in this case, right, rotate up. Oh, no, we've got problems. We clearly can't do it that way. Because rotating up is a pretty integral function. That being said, it's going to be constrained by an actual uh, constraint later. So the x-axis was most important to get right. Uh, because it, de it, it depends on that to actually look at the object. So we try and make it so that our y-axis up, which is typically used by aim constraints to keep them uh, oriented the correct way, uh, whether it's to world or another object's y-axis, um, that's what you want. So we're going to rotate the uh, x-axis so that the y-axis points up, right? So now these two are kind of like mirrors of each other, right? Well, except for the fact that the z-axis is the same, right? Which seems to make sense to me. So now we're, like, we're rotating on like the ball mode. And you see that um, it makes sense. So when I rotate left, both of them go left. When I rotate up, but they both go up. And if I were to rotate X, they also go the same way. That is a behavior that we want from eyes. So. And then we keep going, right? We keep going. Apply. Oh, too many arguments. Ah, yeah, you can't do them. You cannot do like more than one at the same time. So you got to mirror one join, which is a little bit awkward. But that's just the way that game is played, apparently. So off it goes. Right, we're gonna do the lower eyelids first here. Lower, yeah. Of course, I know who that is. Um, okay. All right. Same story here. Yeah. You see that the uh, the angles are, of course, completely wrong. All right. So I want to rotate my uh, eyelid. Right. I see that that's clearly closing correctly. The actual angle of the x-axis is wrong though and what we tried first i think was that we tried rotating the uh, y-axis well we're trying rotating really the z-axis this is this time so 180 over there try not to double click it okay right so upwards okay that's the only direction that that goes um, so most of that is pretty okay if you're considering just the actual eyelash like main bone sorry the eyelid main bone that's, that's probably okay not so okay for your um, correctives though you know just your uh, so those should probably be the exact same as that right because well apart from of course being flipped in one way so what else have we got here we got the left right aspect not that you use it but Again, you probably want that to be the same. As we say, one of these axes ends up being um, the same. In this case, it's fine. But for these, we probably want it to match what this has. So if we'll just put on the uh, LRA on that. Okay, we see that. Over there, most of this is pretty much just going to be rotate your uh, Z axis, but obviously not in this case. Uh, in this case, we also need to rotate our X axis. See? Now, the good thing, at least though, is that you'll be pretty much talking to it in 90s and 180s. Uh, so there's no real complication. If you are having to talk to it in, in uh, numbers besides that to get it to rotate the way that you were need it to you have failed you need to go back and sort it from the origin before you mirror it over right back turn that back off right so now when i've got these not like that maybe we'll take like these two right they move in the same way right the only, so the only issue with this um to me is that we have to apply correctives for at the same time. 
but well, not at the same time, but we can't apply them at the same time. That's it. That to me is not particularly great. Um, so what can we do about that? Because if we look at the Y axis, okay, can we change this perhaps to be more sensible? Perhaps not really. Like if we have it like this instead, what happens, right? Well, nothing because that's in world. I want an object. Um, unselect that one. Put that back over there. Put it like this again. Yep. So when I select, when I move these around, even in object space, right? They're gonna move the same direction. And there's not a lot you can really do about that here. It seems. We would like for it to be able to mirror over in some way. It would be nice to do that, I think. Um, but the problem is that it comes with a compromise of, you know, we need in and out to be the same. We need left, right uh, to be inverted, but we also need up, down to be the same. And that can be a little bit uh, tricky. We might do some, it may be worth uh, doing something where, like, you mirror them over, and I think that's pretty much what, like, I think pretty much what you'd what you would do here in terms of facial uh, bones is that you you make your corrective things over here, and then you copy like the values of this over um, here, right? But then you have to reverse them. Back. Wait a sec. Okay, so let me try again. So 3.1 blah blah. That also has 3.1 blah blah. I'm just checking what's the reverse of that. So Z here is reversed. So that also on 0.01, this one's on zero, what? Strange. Undo a little. Hmm. Seems a little weird, I just want to flip this again just in case. Because that seems really weird to me. But that's it, minus 0 0.1. Oh, it's probably like some rounding issue. A little strange to me, so I'm just going to go ahead and take this lot, freeze it just before I do anything, and I'm just gonna orient, orient them, actually I'm just gonna undo that. seemed a little weird to me. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I'm worrying too much. Maybe it is like a... Maybe that is just a decimal point thing, but that seems like zero, like absolute zero to me. It's freaking me out. These transformations. Bye, and see what happens over there. So 0 0.3586, 3.86, right? Yeah, that makes sense to me. So just do that. I think it must have been just some slight issue where it did need to be frozen. Anyways, uh, attempt to orient. Then go here. About ten. Not like that. Y axis. Ten. Okay. Pointing that. This thing needs to be the exact same direction as the other. 
the other thing here. I highly doubt that it is, so easiest way. What? There's a left upper eyelid still? Oh yeah, there is. Kill it. Anyways, okay, so we're just going to go ahead and freeze all of it. Then take these two. Take all of it. Or maybe not those two. Yeah, actually. Uh, orient those. Now they're in... They're not exactly in the same direction, actually. Mm. Might be easier just to orient this one manually. So manual tweak so that... Go zero, ten here, rotate that through. Oh, oh of course. All the way. Just want to rotate that so that the uh, x axis is pointing the same direction, which should be this way. So now we can rotate the y ten. Go that. It's here that way. It's probably it. Probably gonna use a little less five degrees. Good point five back. Oops. Two point five back. That's probably good. Right now we just need to reverse one of these. Also, because it's open, might be worth like trying to. Uh... Actually, if it's gonna be done via a driven key, it's probably not too bad that it's pointing like that. That's probably okay. Um, closing the eyelid is very much a driven key thing anyway. You wouldn't really, I don't think anyway, that you would uh, worry too hard about like the pointing direction. It's more just that you say whether or not it is or isn't based on its rotation value. Okay, anyway. So zero that, uh, 90 degrees that, and that one, a positive action, negative action, right, okay, pom pom. The positive action is that closing, the positive action of this should also be closing, yep. So now when you go ahead and rotate those, okay, so you open, close. Not that they both travel at the same rate. But anyway, uh, that's fine with that. Take this slot. Are they frozen already? I probably doubt it. Yep. They're frozen now. They're also pointing in the direction of that thing, which I think has saved us a massive headache, actually. Yep, that's definitely uh, a good thing that they've done that. The only issue with it is that uh, the y-axis are not pointing the same direction throughout. That's easy enough to resolve. We just grab them, grab them, rotate that on. Not over 9,000. Um, but it is the x-axis that I did need. <laughs> Paying attention is hard. Anyways, there we go. Right, so now that the x and y are the same, that makes perfect sense. Just un-isolate that, uh, grab the oh, an upper eyelid. Right, we've got about a little time left, a little bit. But you can see that there's so, so many places where you can go wrong, so many. Okay, mirror that over, oh, yep, that was dumb. This should also keep our latest, last settings, so nope, it did not. I double click it, nope, never mind. <laughs> Alright, fine. So it's very inconsistent sometimes how it like uh, keeps certain settings. And you would think that it would be based on that, but it's not always. Right, so see, you see how this remembered? YZ? So maybe if we try that, 
and then try the uh, uh, the button after. Nope. Unfortunate. So uh, we, we do have to keep the, uh, the box open. Unfortunate. So that aspect is something I really detest about my uh, um, is whether or like it is inconsistent when the hotkey uses settings. Or at the very least, is not visible. Um, so that can be a bit of an annoyance. But, anyways. Alright, there we go. So, obviously that needs to be rotated around. Ninety degrees on Y usually, or Z, one of the two. Ninety. Well, one hundred really, but you know. L, yep. So when we go ahead and do this, yep. But now, like the real fun thing is, what happens if you do both? Um, okay, okay, good. And then if you rotate on the ball, perhaps, what happens? You do as you expect. Not exactly, but there's al there's always going to be a part which doesn't match up, right? But then again, you're not going to swing eyelids left to right, are you? So that's the, the goal, is to get them to try and line up. So over here then, right, we've got this on object mode. Now when we rotate left and right, oh sorry, when we move left and right, it doesn't really uh, help us here. We would like for that to be the other side. So grab them. And rotate X on 180. Zero that for now. Is any other buttons? Okay, go again. Right, so that gives us left to right movement that way. Um, which isn't necessarily what we want. Uh, we would like for the Z axis to be opposite. Ah, okay, so now we've actually messed up. We should have it that way, but then rotate uh, the Y axis. I think not Y axis. No, we should rotate the Z axis 180, right? So we keep the Z axis that way, but we rotate the other two axis that way. Yeah, okay, so now what we get is not what we want. <laughs> Zero that. Uh, yeah. that. Gonna check that. That is definitely an object, right? Yep, yep, yep. That's a bit strange. Oh, whoops! I'd accidentally moved this one as well. Oh, that was dumb. Here we go. But of course, they're going to match if you do the exact same action to them, <laughs> or rather, in this case, not match. Real dumb. Right, back that off. Uh, we still need that to be rotated so that that's that way. Yep. And then that points that way, which is fine. That's what we want. But it would be really nice if the Y axis had uh, been, been able to point upwards. But I don't think that's really possible given the actual setup. Again, like you're always going to get one that doesn't really work, which is why you end up having to mirror stuff over, which is why I ended up redoing that. Uh, part right. So this is minus 1.448. This is minus 1.447. Okay, so maybe it really was just a rounding issue, and um, for whatever reason, you know, one of them is just like a point one out of sync. But I think that can be forgiven a little bit. I mean, it's probably not as crazy as uh, you know some of the things. As long as they're not like wildly out, I guess. We're talking like 0 0.1. 0 0.0001 of a decimal, so maybe that's okay. But still, it does it did freak me out a little bit. I mean, that's not what I'm used to seeing. Uh so right, so those two, right, like that are okay, up and down are okay, and of course in and out are okay. Right. So then if I want to mimic this movement. All 
that seems a bit strange still. Is that now been frozen? It should have been. So that that would have been zeroed, right? What is going on? I get an error, did I, over there? No, no, I'm gonna frozen it. It's still definitely like that. So it is, it is offset based on that. Okay. Not really much you can really do there then. So if I were to do this, that. Ah, right, okay. So I'm gonna do that, and then put that there. And then unreverse one of these, one of these things. Maybe then it needs clusters, and then the clusters, uh, that seems to make more sense to me actually. That you would have clusters or locators or, you know, something like that, that actually controls them, and then you move the controls because they'll be zeroed. Um, because you can't really zero the bone. So, that seems to make more sense to me. Yeah, it just seems a little weird at first. Sorry. It really is an idiot's uh, experience of friggin'. So, yeah, because this is in relation to this bone. So, if you were to grab this lot and paste that in there, but then own like take out the. Uh, negative there that should apparently it does not apparently it goes over and does something wildly different we got some limit in there shouldn't do degrees of freedom all fine limit information no limits that was a little weird okay whatever um, I think the course of action to take with this is to place a like control um, so that could be like a shape or something over here and then you drive that with your driven key and you hide it that way your bones will still be able to move but the actual zero of it will be based on the control rather than the uh bone location well i'm fairly sure i was able to get like a zeroed out value that's just a little freaky to me maybe i've done something wrong I would go here for this slot, remembering what value this was at, like that. Minus 0 0.65, minus 1.448. So if we were to take this slot, freeze it for now, right? Just to see. Freeze it. Changes nothing about it. In fact, the y axis goes uh, very different. Okay. okay. Perhaps I'm overthinking that. Alright, anyways. Uh, we're just gonna mirror the uh, rest of the stuff over then. Okay. Should we mirror over first? Remembering that you can't mirror more than one thing at a time. A bit smaller. Uh, there are some cases where you may need to attach uh, points over to something else in order to get it to uh, mirror over properly. Or it can be a bit convoluted. But it might help. So in this case, you might need like a dummy joint to attach things to. So if we go ahead and 
We'll just check if it didn't make good. It didn't waste our time and make a joint. Go ahead and throw a dummy joint over there. Change the radius to something stupid. Or at least I'd like to. There you go. Something like that. Throw that over there. And then uh, if we attach a bunch of joints that we know uh, can work with it, like so basically like organized uh, attachment of joints. So like this. You don't need the middle ones. And then hit P to parent that over. Right? And it's just temporary. And then try mirroring that. Bye. Done. Love to see it. Oh. There we are. So joint one, joint two. Take all of them. Find the original joint that it was bound to. Uh, in this case, half of them would have been jaw, and the other one would have, the other half would have been. Um, the other thing hang on so look for lower first lower and i think outer maybe would have been part of that. or outer would be no 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 outer would be controlled by the uh other thing don't worry i'm talking like weird don't worry basically what i'm saying is that the lower mouth would be joined to the jaw and then the upper mouth and this outer corner would be still on the head base um, so worry too much. Parent it back. Then get uh, these four. Find head base there. Parent it back. These two joints are now not really necessary but you can keep uh, the, the first joint so that you can keep binding it to other things. Sadly, we don't think we were out of time for this one, so <laughs> we still didn't get to controls. That's really annoying. But, you know, just this just goes to show just how many problems you can get through um, with the rigging process. It's very technical. And, like, most of this is really down to the skeleton, right? Mo a lot of this just really, really depends on having a good skeleton. But you do this once, and then afterwards, um, everything should really fall into place, you know? That's what I think anyway. And, it, and this is in the context of just, you know, rigging characters for portfolio. The level that you probably have to go to for actual, um, you know, like technical work, I imagine is even further. So, you know, this is just the basics of it. And you could probably use something like human IK or something like that. But that's still something that I'm still you know, trying to learn. Anyways, so like, we'll cover this little bit for this little bit, right? Just so that we can see like the mouth um, over here. So jaw is currently controlling that. It should also be controlling this. Yes, it should be. Why is that not there? Why has that not been parented to it? What the heck? That should be parented to jaw. Like that. Mid R, lower mid R. Yeah, lower mid R should be there. I don't know why it's not. So when it rotates that, that sh lower jaw should be rotating that way. Okay, cool. It's wasn't for some reason, but whatever. Um, so that's fine. Anyway, so as we can see, this this uh, joint has now been um, mirrored over. So all that has to happen is that. So 180 on Y, so that your x-axis faces the correct direction, and then the other bit over here uh, should let's just try that first there we go right okay and then x uh, 180 as well Derp. don't know why that like took so much energy to explain bump, bump. Right, and then the last bit here select those two and then select their um, alter like the mirrored version and well, I should have just had 180, 180 ready. Boom. Look at it now. There you go. They're both the same. All right. And then for you know, 
the other side is just a case of mirroring the value and that should be all right because they both belong to the same bone so it should be okay all right then so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna mirror the rest of this because it's really boring uh to go through like i think we get the gist of mirroring all of the bones over so i don't need to explain to you 16 different ways how to mirror each one because you know it's basically the exact same process of mirror the joints over maybe attach them to a joint and then correct their orient orientation so i feel that i've explained well enough uh for a lot of these anyway that the orientation should follow the exact same rules but one of these axes is gonna be wrong right one of the axis uh directions is going to be the same i guess as its mirror counterpart so uh i hope that makes sense i suppose for like one last demonstration and i think the easiest one to be able to convey this with is the leg so we take that leg there starting from the thigh apply go ahead and isolate from there i suppose this is where any like real differences like happen uh it's like legs and arms and stuff so and it's the exact same philosophy right what direction do you want to rotate in make sure you're in object right so when you rotate y okay those come in that probably makes some sense right it makes sense when you're doing that but obviously x is reversed and we can't have that because they're pointing the wrong direction so we need it uh to point the correct direction let's go ahead and throw lra on that oops i meant all of it all of it probably where some of this did need correcting on the other side that was a little dumb but we'll see Oh wait, no, no, we did do it, we did do it all. Okay, that's fine. I thought that I hadn't done that. Anyways. Oh yes, it did, it's just not selected all of it. Or maybe it's just there. One, two, one, two. There we go, all right. So again, most of this is probably going to be a case of 180, 180 here. Hey. Really? Apparently not. strange oh i haven't selected it <laughs> nope i'll do whatever i just did okay oh again 180 right bang right in general 180 180 on x and y is going to correct most problems so when you select both phi's right these two rotate the same direction. These two end up rotating the same direction. These rotate the same direction. They all rotate the same direction as a result, which seems a bit strange to me, but might not be what you want. But at the same time, you require that your x-axis goes down. However, perhaps when you, like when you're rotating Z, you still need that to be positive. A bit to be positive yep that that's pretty important but when you're rotating y in this case so the y-axis this way is negative the y-axis this way is positive that's not something you can correct in any real circumstance that is something that you merely must deal with but it is a lot better than if you rotated positive this way right that what they both started like crisscrossing or something that would be really bad so by this principle most of these are probably going to be correct so that way is correct then that way yep makes perfect sense to me so that's fine you're also going to see that the y-axis up here uh is that way because we want for when we rotate this down to be positive so that's fine as i say like that plain and simply um seems to suggest what uh, i want it to do so that should be it 
for that. And it, yeah, it would just basically be me repeat, repeating this over, but, but obviously for all the other stuff. Um, we could probably do it in like 30 minutes, but it's just going to be um, more repetitive. So I think that explains pretty much what I want to uh, from in terms of mirror joints. We're going to mirror them all and then we're going to actually make a start on controls tomorrow. Sorry that it's like taking really long, but um, if you have stuck with me, thank you so much. But yeah, we'll definitely be talking about controls tomorrow. But finally. <laughs> Alrighty then, so thank you so much for attending if you have, and um, hopefully we'll be able to see you uh, next time. Definitely starting controls. Thank you. Bye-bye.